Welcome to another edition of Sports Weekly. I'm Matt Price. And I'm Dom Fister. We've got a great show for you today from Ithaca to Cornell. Sports Weekly's got you covered, and it all starts right now. Shut up and sit down. by heading over to the Robert J. Kane Sports Complex at Cornell University where the Big Red women's soccer team looked to continue their red-hot start at 3-0 as they took on the 3-2 St. Bonaventure Bonnies. It was all defense in the early going as the stingy St. Bonaventure defense would force the Big Red into taking a difficult shot from deep that would sail wide left. Cornell would show some resiliency of their own on defense. After a scramble for the ball, Big Red goalkeeper Miranda Iannone would dive on the ball to prevent a Bonaventure goal. Iannone would secure two saves on the day. Offenses would continue to struggle as a Cornell shot sails just over the top of the goal at the 36 minute mark in the second half. The Bonnies would not let up on their defensive end. Look at the bender by Cornell's Emily St. John that is headbutted by the Bonaventure defender. That is how a student athlete uses their head. The ball would ricochet back to St. John who would put it just over the goal and out of play. A Cornell corner kick would end up being the first and only goal of the game as Kaylee Gregory headed the beautiful pass into the net, putting the Big Red up 1-0 in the 74th minute. Gregory mobbed by her teammates after scoring that incredible goal that would secure the win for the Big Red. The win for Cornell gets them off to a perfect 4-0 start while the Bonnies fall to 3-3. Next up for Cornell is going to be a matchup against the Great Danes of the University of Albany who are coming off a 3-0 win in their matchup against St. Francis Brooklyn. Staying on the East Hill, men's soccer looked to win its eighth match of the season on Tuesday as it battled Bucknell at Berman Field. The Big Red had not won a game since October 12th. How would they do here? Jumping over to the 25th minute of the contest, this is Cornell's Tyler Bagley with a shot attempt, but Bucknell goalkeeper Emmett Whitmer says not so fast. Spectacular diving save to keep the match scoreless. Then about 10 minutes later, Big Red with a corner kick attempt. The ball is headed by a Cornell player but look at Whitmer knocking the ball away. Bison are able to clear it after that. And then we move ahead to final minutes of the first half. George Pedlow finds his teammate Griffin Gerard. However, Gerard does not kick the ball hard enough to get it past Whitmer. Big Red outside the Bison for nothing in the period, but the game would be not at zero at the half. Second half now, just over 34 minutes remaining in regulation. Big Red with a free kick attempt to try to strike first. Bagley hits the top of the post, but look who is right there to finish the job. The senior Brady Dickens. His first goal of the season gives Cornell a 1-0 advantage. Later in the half, about six minutes to go. A lot of chaos ensuing on this sequence. You have Bucknell players doing everything they can to clear the ball out of their zone and avoid further damage, and the ball eventually would land in the feet of John Scares. He finds a sliding Spolax Wixel, but somehow Whitmer is able to get a hand on it. Keeps the deficit at one. Final seconds now. Bucknell with one last shot to tie the game. Cornell goalie Braden McSway knocks the ball away. Stefan Golitz, though, is wide open for Bucknell, but he kicks the ball over the net. The Big Red survives a wild night at Berman Field, a 1-0 victory over the Bison. That save by McSwain in the final few seconds was his only save of the night. Brady Dickens scored the lone goal of the match in the 57th minute. As for Bucknell, Emmett Whitmer, Nick King, and Zach Kerchala each received the yellow card. Bison fall to 5-6-5 and five on the year, while Cornell improves to 8-5-2. and two. Big Red wraps up its home schedule against Ivy League rival Princeton on Saturday. After the break, next Sports Weekly's Max Lichtenstein has a closer look at one of the team's most important pieces. Goalkeeper is the one position on the soccer field where you can either become the hero or the villain. When we come back, we will sit down with Ryan Shello, goalkeeper of the Cornell Big Red, and see what his journey was like from Miami to Ithaca. Stay tuned for more. Welcome back to Sports Weekly. I'm Matt Price. And I'm Dom Fister. For any soccer team, the keeper is such an important part of the team. And for the 8-5-2 Cornell Big Red, that is no different. Our own Max Lichtenstein has more. Cornell men's soccer is a team on the rise, with national rankings and regional rankings in the past two seasons, and wins over programs like Syracuse and U Albany. The man in net, Ryan Shello, has played a big part in the team overall success. My coach has and his staff have really implemented as a brand new coach since they got here, which was also my first year here. And uh, it's just, 
putting in the effort is the main thing, be willing to work harder than all the other teams and just doing the right things both on and off the field, treating yourself the right way, treating your teammates the right way. And I think every year the culture's gotten better and it'll continue to get better. The Miami native has played a total of 35 matches in net for the Big Red, and currently this season has a 7-3-1 record in between the pipes with five total shutouts. Missing a year due to injury, Shallow is available to come back for a redshirt season next fall. Looking to run and hits it in. Almost over Shallow does. Right now my plan is just to keep playing soccer after school. And uh, after that, not really sure what, what's to come. Probably find a job of some sort and uh, see, see how it goes from there. Ryan Shallow has a bright future ahead and has all the tools a great goalkeeper needs. Professional soccer is in Shallow's future plans but the goalkeeper wants to stay focused on the current season at hand. Shello has been a tremendous backstop for the Cornell men's soccer team in his last three years and hopes to continue his improvement as he may come back for a fifth year next year. In Ithaca, New York, I'm Max Lichtenstein, Sports Weekly. As success continues for two of Ithaca's collegiate programs, it is now different for a local high school team with a new face. Sports Weekly's Alex LeMay has the story. Lansing Bobcats soccer head coach Benji Parks has lived in Lansing his entire life. You know, I grew up here, my, my mother grew up here, um, and so I've, I've grown up, I played soccer, baseball in high school. Um, you know, I, we kind of started the run my senior year for this boys soccer team, uh, made it to Middletown uh, for the state finals, um, and then we won it all for baseball my, my senior spring, so it was kind of a nice way to get out and uh, finish my high school career. Benji is even an IC alum, where he played baseball under Coach Vale. And then I went off to uh, Oneana for three semesters and then decided I wanted to move back to Ithaca and transferred back to IC and, and uh, finished my career there. To say that Benji loves the local area would be an understatement. You know, I, I love it here. You know, I think that's what I realized when I went to Oneana. Um, just the amount that I missed and, and there's so much to do. You know, there's the downtown, there's, there's the, the waterfalls, um, you know, you have your, your local sports which are really good around here and, and there's so much to do. Benji missed his hometown of Lansing so much, he's back here now as a gym teacher and the head coach of the boys soccer team trying to lead them to their third straight state title. The, the coach I took over for um, was probably the most influential person beside my parents in my life. And so when he passed away suddenly, you know, I felt um, like it was my, my job to step up and, and carry on his legacy. He's like a brother, an older brother to us. He like drives hard work and consistency and communication and that we want to have a good team like bond. And that team bond has really helped us win. In Lansing, Alex LeMay, Sports Weekly. Staying on the pitch, Ithaca Field Hockey had its five-game winning streak snapped by Susquehanna last weekend. The Bombers look to get back on the winning side of things when they hosted SUNY Cortland at Higgins Stadium. This was an exciting game from start to finish. Picking things up late in the first half, this is Ithaca on a corner strike attempt. Victoria Sestito with a shot, and it goes off the stick of her teammate Samantha Horowitz. That is Horowitz's third goal of the season. Bombers strike first and would lead 1-0 at the half. Moving right along, early third quarter. Portland forces a turnover. Take a look at Molly Quinlan on the breakaway, bypassing one bomber after another. She has her teammate Lily Fox blocking in front, and Quinlan sneaks by a sliding Savannah Lanker and shoots a line drive into the goal, nodding things up at one apiece. Just over 60 seconds later, a corner, a corner strike opportunity for the Red Dragons. Shot by Hannah Birchall. Savannah Lanker says, I don't think so. The Ithaca goalkeeper keeps things tied at one. A few seconds later, though. Quinlan, after the pass from Birchall, gets inside the box and shoots the ball past Lanker, Quinlan's second goal of the game, and it would prove to be the difference in the contest as Ithaca would not find ways to respond. The Red Dragons march into Higgins Stadium and knock off the Bombers 2-1. Both of Quinlan's goals were scored within two minutes of each other. Cortland goalie Marissa D'Amico gave up the lone goal and only had two saves throughout the whole 60 minutes. Savannah Lanker did give up both Cortland goals, but also had nine saves in the loss. Ithaca travels to face SUNY Geneseo this coming Saturday. The Ithaca College women's volleyball team had their Liberty League home opener against rival Union at Ben Light Gymnasium. Ithaca came into the match 9-4, looking to put the, itself in position for first place in the Liberty League. 
Union would strike first as it returns an Ithaca serve up in the air to set up the slam over the net. The first set would go back and forth before Ithaca took a 24-20 lead and after an amazing rally consisting of both teams keeping the ball alive, it was the Bombers who prospered in the end, winning the set 25-20. Ithaca would control the second set, returning a Union serve up 23-18 and then setting up the powerful kill by Allison Lipton, this being one of Lipton's nine kills throughout the match. A Union serve into the net would give Ithaca the win in the second set, 25-18. On to the third set, the closest of the three sets, 24-23. Ithaca lead, Union fighting to keep playing on the day, back against the wall. A great return off an Ithaca kill attempt, but then Lipton would call game, giving Ithaca a win in the third set, 25-23, and a clean 3-0 sweep of Union. A win for the Bombers as Captain Caitlin Floyd picked up 31 assists on the day. Ithaca improves to 9-5 overall. Up next for Ithaca is another Liberty League matchup against the Skidmore Thoroughbreds. Coming up next on Sports Weekly, we move to the national landscape and the NFL before taking a look at a different kind of Cornell football. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Weekly. I'm Dom Fister. And I'm Matt Price. First, it was a blown lead against the Bills. Then, quarterback Sam Darnold was diagnosed with mono. Now, we are in week six of the NFL season, and the Jets have yet to win a game. They tried to fix that on Sunday when the Dallas Cowboys walked into MetLife Stadium for a late afternoon contest. Fast forwarding to lay in the first quarter, second and goal for New York inside the Dallas two-yard line. Darnold hands it off to Le'Veon Bell, and he fights his way to the goal line. Jets strike first. They lead 7-0. Second quarter now, 3.46 to go before halftime. Jets up by four. Darnold airs one out downfield and he hits his man Robbie Anderson who takes flight. A 92 yard TD reception which sends the Meadowlands into a frenzy. Jets extend their lead to 14-3. Moving ahead to the fourth quarter. Jets up 21-9 with about six and a half to go. Here comes the Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott on third and short turns the corner and dives into the end zone. Cowboys not going away quietly. That would make the score 21-16. Less than a minute to go. Jets had already extended their lead up to eight. First and goal for Dallas at the four, and Dak Prescott takes it himself for a huge touchdown. Cowboys a two-point conversion away from tying the game. On the attempt, Prescott tries to find his veteran tight end, Jason Wynn. All of the Cowboys players thought there was pass interference. No call, though. That would leave it up to the only thing that could give Dallas one more shot, the old onside kick. Brett Maher trying to do just that, but Demarius Thomas comes up with the football. The New York Jets win their first game of the season as they hold on to upset the Cowboys 24-22. Despite a rally in the second half, the Cowboys could not do enough in the running game. Elliott was held to only 105 rushing yards over 28 carries. Darnold, on the other hand, was excellent, completing 23 of his 32 passes and throwing for over 330 yards. Next weekend, Dallas hosts Philadelphia on Sunday Night Football, while Gang Green hosts the Patriots on Monday Night Football. It was a matchup of 2017 first-round quarterbacks as 2018 NFL MVP Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs squared off against Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans in Arrowhead Stadium. After a few penalties put the Chiefs in a tough situation, Patrick Mahomes used a hard count to earn a free play where he would throw a touchdown, a welcome back touchdown to Tyreek Hill who came back from an injury suffered earlier this season. Mahomes kept the Chiefs offense rolling as a screen pass to Damian Williams would go all the way 18 yards into the end zone for another Chiefs touchdown to make the score 17-3. Second quarter, Deshaun Watson marches the Texans down the field and running back Carlos Hyde would finish the drive with a two-yard touchdown run untouched to make the score 17-16. Hyde politely telling the Kansas City fans to quiet down. 23 seconds left before halftime, Watson looking to pass the Chiefs' four-yard line. Can't find anyone open, so he takes it himself for another Texans touchdown, a Houston 23-17 lead at the half, coming out of the half. Mahomes works the scramble drill and finds who else but a wide open Tyreek Hill for his second touchdown of the game. Hill showing off some of his dance moves he must have been working on while recovering from his injury. Chiefs up 24-23, Texans at the goal line. Watson, play action fake, his receivers get jammed at the line of scrimmage so he improvises and fights for the touchdown to put his team back on top. The two point conversion, Watson buries the ball into the chest of DeAndre Hopkins who gets thrown to the ground but holds on to make the catch and the Texans convert. 31-24 Houston, two minutes to go, fourth down and three, and the Texans go to their guy Hopkins, who makes the catch and secures the win for his team. Texans hold on to win, 
Watson and Mahomes combined for 553 yards and four touchdowns on the day. The Texans advance to 4-2, while the Chiefs' loss brings them to 4-2 on the season as well. Up next are two divisional games for each team. Texans will take on the Colts, while the Chiefs will play the Denver Broncos. Coming up next, we'll have more. Stay with us. Welcome back to Sports Weekly. The women's tennis team just recently started their season. Our very own Josie Lombard gave us an inside look. This past season, the women's tennis team had a record of 3-14 and 14, with a winning percentage of .176. They hope to improve individually and as a team. You know, we qualified for our first Liberty League uh, uh, conference tournament, which, you know, is a big stepping stone for, for the program considering where you know, where we kind of sit in the conference right now. With the team dynamic going strong. Heard from the coaches. Now you're going to hear for the play, my players to see how they are going to prepare for the new season. We qualified for Liberty League, so I'm obviously hoping to do that again and see how far we are able to go in that tournament. Um, I hope to improve my personal singles and doubles record um, and do better than I did last year. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just for everyone to just push themselves and do the best that they possibly can. With a sport like tennis, you kind of get the best of both worlds because um, it's very individual in the sense that you're, um, it's just you on the court, especially when it's singles. Mm -hmm. But then you have, um, when you're playing doubles, you have a partner and you're able to combine the, the team element with um, what you want to personally accomplish for yourself. From Gla Glacier Arena in the NHL Over at Cornell Sholkoff Field, we have some Ivy League sprint football action. Now what is sprint football, you may ask? It is the college football you are used to watching with one added twist. All players must weigh 183 pounds or less. Currently, 10 teams make up the Division I League. Two of those schools are the Cornell Big Red and Penn Quakers, who faced off against each other last weekend. First quarter, Penn already up, 6-0, and an absolutely beautiful fade ball by quarterback Eddie Jenkins to the back of the end zone will increase the, that score to 13-0 in favor of the Quakers. Penn ball, oh, great catch by 81. Penn ball inside the red zone. Again, this time they dial up a quarterback draw play that fools the defense as Jenkins scurries in untouched for six. Penn running away with it up 26-0 and in Cornell territory again. The jet motion and fake sweep. Jenkins keeps it, makes a few defenders miss on his way to his second rushing touchdown of the game. 40 to nothing. Now Penn lead and a running back sweep by Laquan McKever will increase that lead some more as the Quakers go up 46-0 over the Big Red. Penn pouring it on. 61-0, Cornell showing signs of life as they drive into Penn territory. And number 44, Jacob Winkup powers his way into the end zone to get the Big Red on the board for their lone touchdown of the day. Penn takes this one 61-7. Penn earns its first win of the year to get to 1-1 one one on the season, while Cornell drops to 1-1 one one on the year as well. Jenkins absolutely lighting it up, having four touchdowns and over 200 yards passing. McKever adding another 150 yards on the ground in the touchdown. Cornell looks to rebound next week as they will take on the Army Black Knights while Penn will host the Post Eagles. After one more break, we will be back with a look inside the Ithaca College men's basketball team season. Don't go anywhere. Sports Weekly will be right back. Welcome back to Sports Weekly, where our very own Carson Williams got an inside look at an Ithaca College men's basketball team that believes they can compete for a Liberty League championship. As the Ithaca men's basketball team prepares for their upcoming tournament in Elmira, New York, many players and fans expressed high expectations for the 2018-2019 season. After going 16-11 and last year, including 11-7 and in conference games, Ithaca looks to build upon the success with some familiar faces, including three of the five starters from last year, two of which were the top two scoring leaders during the last season. Senior point guard Riley Thompson and senior small forward Sebastian Alderay are excited for the upcoming season and believe this year's team is special. You know, I think we have a lot of talent, you know, really good balanced team with some good returners. Uh, everyone plays hard, everyone likes each other. You know, I just think it's about getting all the pieces to gel. I think this can definitely be a special team that makes a run at a championship. 
Uh, I think 1 through 15, we're probably the most talented team in the league, I would have to say. We got scorers that can come off the bench, and I, I believe our starting five is probably the best starting five in the league. So I would have to say we have a pretty talented team. While expectations are high for this year's men's basketball club, many loyal fans and students at Ithaca College are excited with the talent on this year's current roster. I think the, the talent that's coming back, I'm you know, excited to see them work, especially Sebastian and Riley, you know, uh, dudes that I've played like pickup with who have crazy talent. So I think I'm looking forward to the season. With the season starting in just one week, players and fans are ready for the challenge of meeting high expectations. In Ithaca for Sports Weekly, I'm Carson Williams. Thanks, Carson. The number 14 ranked wrestling team placed third and had three championships at the Ithaca Invitational to open up their season. Sophomore Logan Ninos was crowned champ of the lightest weight class, while transfer Jordan Wallace picked up the title at the 174-pound weight class. And sophomore Ease Chukwuzi won the 184-pound weight class. The Bombers will be back in action against the University of Pittsburgh at Johnstown. I'll tell you what, Dom, this is, uh, this is a quite a wrestling team. It's been successful for many years now. What have you seen from this wrestling team? Well, I'll tell you what, Chuck Woozy, if I had to wrestle him, I'd feel pretty woozy. <laughs> he's, not, he's, he's a fighter, man. He's good. Uh, I like that. I like that. Thank you, thank you. And with that, it is the end of our show. For Dom Fister, I'm Matt Price saying thanks for watching. From all of us here at Sports Weekly, we hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next week.